In our last video, we looked at acid-base reactions that involved neutralization, okay, or what we call strong acid-base reactions. What I want to go over with you now are what are known as weak acid-base reactions. And again, these are the type of reactions that we may see more um, in nature or in physiological settings, maybe in, uh, in biology, let's say. Now, a quick review on what acids are, and I'm going to give you some of the, uh, the more common weak acids. So let's again review acids still begin with an H, okay, and they typically begin with a carbon for the anion. So there's a weak acid known as acetic acid, and that's the, uh, the acid that we, we taste in vinegar. Now you may think vinegar has a very strong taste, and it does, but it's actually a fairly weak acid. It doesn't really dissolve our mouth or anything. It's more of a, a flavoring. Another weak acid would be this one here. This is called formic acid. And this is actually the acid that you may uh, experience if you've ever been bitten by a fire ant or accidentally stepped into a, a pile of fire ants. And again, that does sting and hurt and burn, but it's actually one of the weaker acids in nature. So you may uh, think back, those strong acids, boy, they sure must be really strong if these are the weak ones. And then another weak acid, which is very important biologically, is this one here, H2CO3. This is called carbonic acid. And this is what we have uh, involved, the acid that's involved in our respiratory processes. Okay, when we uh, exhale or when we under, uh, our, our cells undergo um, metabolism um, or respiration, what's produced is carbonic acid, and that needs to be gotten rid of. Okay? So in general, though, our acids still look pretty much the same. Okay, they begin with an H. They're still ionic in nature, so we still have the plus one charge here and a minus one charge here plus one charge on the hydrogen, minus one charge here, plus one charge on the hydrogen, and this carbonate ion, because again, there's two hydrogens, this has a minus two charge. That's why the formula is as such. Okay, so no big departure here with the, uh, the weak acids. Now the bases are a little bit different. In the strong bases, um, we saw that they all end in the hydroxide or OH ion. Here we have something different. Weak bases, or what are sometimes known as uh, uh, nucleic bases, have nitrogen out in front, and then a back part, in this case, H3. So NH3, or ammonia, is known in chemistry as a weak base. Another weak base might be, again, beginning with nitrogen, and we can have Cl2 and maybe a fluorine. Notice that the number of atoms connected to the nitrogen always seem to add up to three in this case. Three hydrogens here, two chlorines and a fluorine. Or we could have maybe a third one, nitrogen with one hydrogen and two bromines. Okay, so adding up to a total of three atoms connected to the, to the nitrogen. Okay, so no longer do we see the OH or hydroxide ion in bases when we talk about weak bases. Instead, we look for substances that begin with the nitrogen atom. Okay? Now, there's something interesting we need to kind of cover here, and that is water. If we look at water in its formula, well, water contains hydrogen out in front and hydroxide in the, uh, in the back. And it might be thought of as being, well, literally half acid and half base, okay? It, we know that water is pretty benign. It doesn't harm us uh, uh, chemically at all, but it is technically made up of half acid and half base. What water acts as in these weak reaction is kind of a double agent, okay? And it can play either role. It can be an acid or it can be a base, depending on which from these two columns it's reacting with. Okay, so keep in mind water will always be involved in these weak acid-base reactions or what we call buffer reactions. Okay, and it will depend on who it's reacting with, either one of the acids or one of the bases, and it will take on the appropriate role. And we'll cover that with weak acid-base reactions next.